Hello and welcome back to the Trilofits Toolbox and if you remember we did a canister filter replacement didn't we which was in comparison to other filters they are quite easy to do just screw them off and screw them back on again however cartridge filter a little bit different here there's some uh, a few things to be aware of this is more the modern thing where you need your o-ring replaced and getting the right filter or well, this cap of course is a bit of a pain because it can break so the canister filter was on the Mazda 2 13 plate which uh, yeah that was the 1300 nice little car that is nice little engine a bit slow but never mind run of the mill sort of thing I have to do is a military style operation so I have to get everything ready so I can move at a moment's notice because of neighbours. This includes removing all the plastic so I can uh, get to components like this, which is the filter or filter cap just here. And the problem is, the biggest problem is my neighbour just here. She's uh, medical services NHS, so she needs access to a garage. And this means I have to move in an instant for her. And uh, it just as well, really, because, uh, yes, yeah, the way it is. So we have the tin drip tray here, and we're going to need it on this Citroen because when you remove the filter cap, which is right here, it drips oil everywhere. So that is a 27 mil fitting and it's actually quite awkward to get at and as soon as you remove it, it splatters oil everywhere. There are loads of different ways they position these filters on vehicles. However, this is the type of issue that I'm uh, faced with every time I replace a filter. Is There's no way around it actually. So you can see the oil comes around and drips off the uh, bell housing. Yeah. So that's why we have a tray here and you can see how much oil is released. You can imagine how irate my neighbours would be if I let that much oil out onto the drive. So yeah, cartridge filters, this specific one, yeah there are two different types, there's always two different types. O-rings always get replaced, never ever use the old O-ring in a cap. Now the caps can crack because people over tighten them, so check them always for any type of cracking. Uh, the uh, tightness on these is uh, marked on the top, but that's 25 newton meters down in the filter housing you'll probably see that little hole there okay you've got the central hole then you've got a little locating hole and look i'll just show you the mess down here again yeah that is horrendous but uh, this vehicle's always done it and i haven't found a way out of that yet so yeah okay the filter gets fitted first and the locating peg goes in the hole as such yep I've noticed some people can't fit filters and they realise that that is actually uh, supposed to be in a certain way. So yeah, filter goes in and then the cap gets screwed into place by hand. Unlike my friend Colin, who I used to work with, who actually forgot to put one of these uh, ceiling rubbers in. Yes, you do need to change them and also you've got to be aware that they shouldn't be twisted. This is why you shouldn't roll them over the threads. But if any nicks occur in the rubber, that could cause a failure and possibly a potential engine failure. Now this one has a taper in it, so the rubber doesn't sit square. It actually sits so it looks like it's got an edge on it, which is good enough. And it's lubricated with a little bit of oil. Now just be aware, apprentice truck fitters, some of these caps actually have thermostats in them and they need to be checked. Anyway, we screw it in, you can feel when you get to the rubber, this is when you can then use a uh, tool, okay? So, I'll uh, just uh, put the 30, no sorry, 27mm socket on there and then wind it up. Now, it says on the cap, it says 25 newton meters. If you are unsure, you'd always use a torque wrench, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I roughly know what 25 newton meters is because it's about the tightness you'd uh, do up an M8 bolt. Yeah, so screw that down. And I can feel it, and all the time I'm actually feeling while I'm screwing it to make sure it doesn't uh, nick up anywhere. Okay, so I've got to the end, and then I'll just give it a little bit of a push. Okay, just a little bit. Okay, that's 25 newton meters. That's to make sure the cap doesn't crack, and I can get the damn thing back off again. So there we go. I just want to tell you, uh, basically all I've done is a filter on this one because uh, high mileage uh, oils, what I do is just um, change the filter and then uh, I'll do a filter oil, then a filter and then filter oil again, yeah? So uh, yeah, these ramps that I use, I'm just going to have a quick look underneath here, make sure she's not leaking or anything. Just watch this. I don't like these ramps specifically. Okay, hang on a second. Just uh, push myself up there. 
very very slowly watch this they tip yeah but i'll get it central and it's okay i never trust anything so I'll come out here and i will check the handbrake is on and the vehicle should really be chocked as well okay even though the handbrake has just passed mot yeah there we go that's all nice and square the second service we've got to do is the fly she's now off the road but she needs an oil change before i put up her into storage uh plenty of tools i have in my bag never enough as always but i try to have some sort of comprehensive toolkit with extensions uh ratchets and the such like and also have a wobble bar to get me out of trouble yeah that gives you a little bit of angle on sockets plus the uh, usual sockets up to 19 mil or up to 24 mil plus adapters as well yep so i have the uh, usual suspects here and i have a uh, three quarter to half inch drive i have a three quarter bar in my bag and i also have this huge massive one here okay this is the mother of all breaker bars yet yeah? so yeah this is a swivel head it looks the uh, equivalent the bigger equivalent of the uh, smaller half inch and three quarters you can either use it as a guitar or yeah, I don't know what you can use it for other than use it as a breaker bar. That's quite big, actually. That's quite big for uh, 50 quid. Not bad. That adapter, yeah, goes with the rest of these. So just in case I need to do something like a, a wheel hub nut or something. Yeah, anyway, so this is a different type of filter. It doesn't have a locating peg. And look, the filter has been crushed and twisted, okay? Oil, yeah, needs changing. And uh, what I've got to do is uh, work out how I can get to the filter because it's in a different position, actually. And this is not so bad. It doesn't gush everywhere all over the place. Now, uh, the adapters that I use, yeah, I've got them in my toolbox. Uh, need them. Need them. Okay, you always need them. And uh, basically, all you need is a 3 8 ratchet for doing this job. But of course, you don't get large 3 8 sockets, do you? So you need an adapter. I'm not using the extension with that because I'm ending up hitting the brake pipes, so this will do. There's the adapter in place and working. There is a video on my uh, tool bag and what tools I've got in it, and I'll go into a little bit more depth about these adapters later. So, yep, this is the correct filter. Okay, it doesn't have a locating peg, however, it is a different shape. Fits in there just nicely, and that will not get twisted when it's tightened up, okay? So, yeah, the same old thing. Change the uh, seal on it. Always change the seal and then do them up. And that will be 25 Newton meters as well. And I'll quickly zip that up, yeah. So, yeah, like, uh, like these adapters, actually. Um, I always have adapters spare just in case. And again, I have a quarter inch drive to three eighths. That's all I need to undo the sump plug, as you can see here. And you'll probably notice, actually, that I'm going to have a little bit of a compromising problem because the uh, <laughs> the uh, bung plug is not directly above the bucket here. That's all I've got for draining oil. And, yep, there you go. Mess. As you can see, I've got a drip tray underneath, and that's one of the reasons, or the other reason, I have a drip tray. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's it. That's done. Bung plug back in and adapt can, uh, can go back on its little stack. And this is how I like to keep my adapters. It's a little bit of a puzzle, actually. If you get a dozen of those, can you stick them all together and make them into a little tree? I'm sure you can. And here goes the uh, golden liquid. Now, with the fly, she will be off the road for a while because now I'm running the Citroen. It's got an MOT on it. This one doesn't have an MOT. However, you never lay up vehicles with used oil in them because the uh, acids in the oil can eat the metal. And, uh, yeah, it's not very nice if you've ever seen vehicles that have been stood up for a while. No, it wasn't 1040 uh, that I put in here. All I did was use this container because it has a 3 litre marker on it. So I can pour that straight in because that large container over there has all my fleet oil in, yeah? So, yep, yeah, on the level, let us sit for a little while. All's drained back and we should check that because I think that is actually perfectly right. Yep, there we go. Not over the markers just a little bit above the middles that's good enough for me be good enough for you yeah and now i can layer up yeah so there we go boom one thing and i have seen people do this is forget to do up the uh, the filler cap yeah that is a vital job otherwise it all splatters all over the uh, the bonnet doesn't it, on the inside so yeah always always check for leaks on these because you never know if you've cracked it when you've screwed it in 
and they are some of these are real pigs to do like this citron one is there are harder ones to do the ford ranger that's a very awkward one i think you have to take the wheel off to do that anyway yeah uh, waste always got waste now i usually have a large container for the uh, engine oils the waste oils and i only have one funnel unfortunately that means i have to use a clean one uh, dump the oil and then uh, <laughs> then clean it out so that's this done for a little while when the containers full that will go down and, and get emptied now there goes the empty packet and if you knew that i had my uh, citron uh, past emissions that's why <laughs> stuck some red x in it and the filters yep they will get disposed of properly never ever put them in the rubbish bin